a Sanrio fighting game? That's not what the title of the video says. This isn't an actual fighting game, but it is a game that I think will appeal to a lot of fighting game players. Sanrio World Smash Ball, a Super Famicom game released in July 1993 only in Japan. It was developed by Tomcat yeah. System and Ape and published by Character Soft. Why might someone who's into fighting games like Sanrio World Smash Ball when it looks like some kind of sports game? Consider the case of Windjammers. Windjammers is definitely not a fighting game, but I don't think there are many people who would call it a sports game either. Windjammers, along with its sequel Windjammers 2, is somewhere in between. Mechanically, they play more like Pong or Air Hockey, where you're just trying to get the disc into your opponent's goal. But you can use several different tactics and even straight up special moves to finesse or brute force your way in. Sure, you use quarter and half circle motions on the controller to curve the disc, but motions alone do not a fighting game make. And as someone who's participated in a Windjammers 2 tournament, I can tell you that almost everyone who plays Windjammers also plays fighting games. Why? I think it's the fast action, the competitive spirit, uniqueness between characters, and the easy to play but hard to master aspect of the game. The reason I mention Windjammers at all is that the mechanics in Sanrio World Smash Ball are similar at their core, even if they're not quite as deep. The controls in Sanrio World Smash Ball are very straightforward. B kicks the ball with your character's right foot and Y with the left. And if you return the ball when it's a bit further away from you, you'll put a little spin on it. But why are there two kicks? Most games would only have a single way of hitting or returning the ball. The simple explanation is that if the ball is coming up to your character's right, you use B to kick with the right foot. And of course, if it's coming on the left, you use Y. But that doesn't necessarily mean you have to return on the same side that the ball's coming in on. Each kick has its own arc. The left kick arcs out from the left to the right, and the right kick from the right to the left. So you can use the appropriate kick to aim the ball in the direction that you want, along with the character positioning, of course. Each player also has a meter, which can be filled by holding down B or Y. When the meter is filled, you can use X to do a powerful smash. There's a catch, though. You can't charge your smash while you're moving your character around the screen, so there's a constant decision to be made between charging for a smash and positioning yourself for a return shot. But there are also power-up items found from breaking blocks throughout some of the levels, though they only last for that match. This one powers up your regular shot, this one speeds up your movement, this one completely fills up your gauge for a smash, and this takes away all of the blocks from in front of your opponent's goal. Sanrio World Smash Ball also has different characters to choose from, all with different stats, though you really have to have access to the manual to know that. And for the gigantic stable of characters that Sanrio had even by 1993, there were only four to choose from, kind of. Though Kitty is featured front and center on the box, she appears only as the referee and isn't playable at all. My guess is that Sanrio didn't want anyone to actually be able to beat her. The other four are the ones you can pick from on the character select screen, so let's take a look at them and their stats. The image from the manual shows each stat as being a rank of one through three. The stats are shooting power, upward and downward movement, left and right movement, and speed at which the smash gauge fills up. A one means the character isn't so good here, and a three means they're great. First up is Keropi, who you've probably seen before, even if you're not particularly into Sanrio. His full name is apparently Keropi Hasunoue, and is sometimes referred to as Kero Kero Keropi, Kero Kero being the sound that a frog makes in Japanese. He was introduced in 1988 and was originally created as a part of a promotion for Japan's rainy season, probably because that's the last time the humidity will be anywhere approaching sane until at least October. In terms of stats, he's the game's all-rounder, with twos across the board. Basically, he's this game's Mario. He does everything fine. Next is Tabo, or Minna no Tabo. He's just a happy and energetic human kid who loves sports and was born on Children's Day, which is May 5th. Introduced in 1984, he was originally used on greeting cards. In this game, he's got a weak shot strength, but the fastest upward and downward movement, which makes him a great choice for getting up in your opponent's face on levels where you're able to do that. 
Everything else is middle of the road. Pocopone is a tanuki who was introduced in 1986 as a character in the Pocopone's diary line of goods and apparently loves haiku. Like Tabo, Pocopone's shot strength isn't good, but the speed at which he builds up his gauge is top notch, giving you many more opportunities to smash. His upward and downward movement is average, but his left and right movement also ranks in at three. This means he can defend his goal a bit easier than the rest. Then there's Hangyodong, a fish character who was born in China. He was introduced in 1985, and in 2022 entered the list of top 10 Sanrio characters for the first time in 34 years, ranking in at number eight. Good job, Hangyodong. He's the only character with a three in shot strength, meaning his regular shots will give other players a run for their money. This comes at the cost of almost everything else, though. He has average upward and downward movement speed, but his left and right movement and smash gauge charge speeds are only at one. But there's one more character. If you get far enough in one player mode, you'll play a bonus game where you have to hit a cutout of this character to earn points and potentially get a permanent speed or power up. You'll also actually face off against this character too. Ebody Boo. According to the manual, they're from another world and don't seem to be an officially acknowledged Sanrio character. The Ebari could potentially be Everly, and the Boo certainly comes from the Boo in Buta, the Japanese word for pig. But though Ebari Boo doesn't appear on the character select screen, you can select them if you know how. Select Hangyodon by pressing A and then quickly move your control pad down. You'll see the selection go to a character that's just slightly off screen. This is also the only way you can have a mirror match in Sanrio World Smash Ball, since presumably you were never meant to be able to actually select them. We don't know Ebari Boo's stats, but just by playing them you can tell that they're above average in everything. My guess is that we're looking at all threes. Is Ebari Boo the super turbo Akuma of Sanrio World Smash Ball and that they're banned for tournament play? Are there even tournaments for Sanrio World Smash Ball? If you've actually played in a tournament, absolutely leave a comment. This game is a blast to play competitively with friends, but unfortunately, it's very clear that more effort was put into the single player mode. There's a far greater variety of levels, most of which just never appear in the two player mode at all. There are also a good amount of weird obstacles that make your life harder and harder by bouncing the ball around in a sometimes uncontrollable manner. The single player mode also has a total of 30 stages, and the opponents gradually grow more and more difficult along with the stages themselves, with an increasing number of stars next to each competitor's name, up to three. The difficulty really does get pretty rough in the last 10 stages, but luckily the game gives you a password after each game over so you can pick up where you left off. This includes any permanent power-ups that you may have won from the bonus game, but I guess even with all that Sanrio money they just couldn't swing a battery back up. But the key to being good at Sanrio World Smash Ball really lies in finding a style that works for you and picking a character that supports that style. To my mind there are really two viable strategies. Prioritize charging up those smashes as quickly as you can and use them to brute force your way through, at the right moments of course, or rely on good movement speed and a fast and powerful shot to work your way through to your opponent's goal without worrying too much about smash attacks. I definitely found myself going for the former. Now, based on stats, we're going to do a quick tier list of the characters. Everyone loves a good tier list, right? I think the extreme ends of this list are actually pretty easy. Ebari Boo, I'm pretty sure, has threes all across the board, so he really belongs up here in God tier, uh, if you even consider him eligible for the tier list. And for as much as I hate to say it, I think that Hangyodon, because he, he has a three for his shot, but that's just not enough to make up for the low scores and everything else. So I think you gotta go down in garbage tier. I'm sorry, buddy. You're a great character, but it's just hard to get anything going with you. And for a normal part of things, I think we can actually put both Keropi and Tabo there. Keropi, again, he's the Mario. He's never gonna be the best. 
Uh, we should know this from Mario Kart and the gajillion and one Mario sports games that there have been, right? He's always just going to be somewhere firmly in the middle, excelling at nothing. Tavo, actually, even though he's on the same tier, he probably goes a little bit ahead of Keropi. He may not have a great shot, but his up and down movement is really good. It really helps for getting up in someone's face. And his left and right movement and his smash are still good. So even if you're playing him from way back, you can do something and have the option to kind of move in on people. And finally, my main, Pokopon, goes right up here under Ebaribu with all the, the non-god-like Sanrio characters. For me, his smash just really wins it for him. It's the best one in the game, not counting Ebaribu, of course. And he's good at everything else except for shot. But again, I feel like shot being a one you can work around. If you're really constantly charging up that smash and just waiting for your moment, uh, you can play forward, you can play back. He's just very well versed. And that's Sanrio World Smash Ball. I saw a couple of people playing this in the hall at Frosty Faustings 2024, and I actually saw someone wearing a shirt of it at Combo Breaker the same year. It gave me Windjammers vibes right from the start, and I'm really glad that I looked into it because it is a lot of fun. Give it a try if you haven't. Until the next Sumash!